everybody! It's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Yes, happy hump day to you. Happy hump day to you. Happy hump day. Happy Wednesday. Whoop whoop. Another inspiration for you. This week, as the title indicated, it's a double Irish chain. Now, when I originally started to do this I was going to use this as my bonus quilt so using it as a leader ender and I was just going to show you how to make two blocks there it is just it just takes two different types of blocks to make this beautiful quilt however I have decided to go ahead I, I want to give value so I split this up into two weeks I'm going to show you next week how to get the quilt assembled so what is a double Irish chain? Well, it's all, it's always been on my bucket list. I'm super excited about this. So I'm going to throw up a couple of pictures here. One is just one color with a off-white background. And the other one is like multiple colors with that off-white background. And they're all very pretty. But that is a double Irish chain. Now, what kind of things may you need? Well, just so you know, you don't have to memorize this. I have put this um, as a, um, a, a PDF file for you. It'll tell you everything that you're going to need to make a quilt the same size as me, but a, that'll end at 70 by 80, okay? Finished quilt. It will end, but it will have all the necessary items for that. And it will also have a coloring sheet so you can play with color if you like, because there's so many color variations of this quilt that you can do amazing, just amazing. So, but you will need, if you did it with yardage, you would need four yards of a background. I'm using myself, uh, Maywood Studios. It's part of their solitaire white collection and it is soft white butterflies cause it's fixing to be spring and I'm getting, well, it's not fixing, it is spring. And I am just super excited. I love spring, it's probably my favorite, so. It's got the butterflies on the tone on tone, so you can't see them from here, but there's butterflies in there. And then I am using this fat quarter bundle. I just pulled the colors, and this is also by Maywood Studios, but it's Kimberbill Basics and it's the spring colors. Both of those you can find in my shop. So the link for that is down below. But I just simply pulled out the various different colors. But if you were to use yardage, if you were gonna do just like that green one where it's just one solid color with a background, you would need two yards of your printed fabric. That is also equivalent to four fat quarter, or no, I'm sorry, that's equivalent to eight fat quarters. I am having so many different colors, so I'm actually using a lot more. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 fat quarters out of this bundle and um, just because I wanted that scrappy look which takes me to this would be a really good scrappy type of quilt so I played with the idea of whether or not I was going to do a two and a half or a one and a half because remember originally I was going to do this as a bonus quilt so I did the two blocks in one and a half inch style and I did it with my scraps super cute I think I might end up making one of these but it's super cute but it's also harder because you have these tiny blocks that all have to be sewn together so for video purposes I went with the two and a half inch version these blocks all finish inside the quilt at 10 inches okay so each block is 10. This is 10 inside the quilt. Unfinished is 10 and a half. This is 10. So if you didn't want to make a 70 by 80, of course it's going to change your fabric requirements, but you could just simply 10 plus 10 is 20 plus 10 is 30 plus 10 is 40. So it makes it easy to figure out how many blocks you'll need. It just changes how much fabric it will call for. And if you need help with that, let me know. Inside that list that I created, I tell you exactly how many blocks 
you'll need of the different sizes for a 70 by 80, but how many are actually in each block. So it's all there for you, okay? Um, so that you can utilize that. And I'm hoping that I'll get the one and a half inch in there too, and it won't be 70 by 80, because there is no way I could do that. <laughs> Personally, I'll, maybe I'll do, I don't know. I don't know, because this is 10 inches finished inside, these two together. So each one of these is five and a half. So it's marked halfway shorter, um, plain and simple. So it would take you a lot, but isn't that just, isn't that just so cute? But if you're digging through your scraps, if you do your, and I don't know how y'all do your scraps, but you can cut individually two and a half inches, for instance, for this block. You could also do um, strip piecing. And that I decided to do in a future video. So for those of you who don't know what strip piecing is, it's not my favorite method, but you can use that to get your blocks done, okay? I ended up using um, the fat quarter and I used the stripology ruler to help speed the process up. I'm not showing any cutting instructions this time. I'm just going to give you the measurements. Eventually I'll do a stripology um, ruler uh, when I figure out the best uses and really get good at it. Because this is this is a new ruler for me, which you can also find in the store. Um, link for that again is down below. So if you're interested. Their um, GE Designs is the one that, that has created that with Creative Grids and she's out on Facebook and YouTube too so you can check her out and you can learn very easily how to use it through the designer. <laughs> you could either go to Creative Grids or you can go to GE Designs and you can see for yourself. Okay, at any rate, why two and a half versus one and a half? It's easier, okay? It's easier for video purposes and small pieces can be very difficult. And there is a lot of seams, lots and lots of seams. If you are a beginner quilter, this is not a good first quilt to do, okay? Um, I probably should have thought about that forehand and maybe done a single chain. So that might be coming down the, later down the tube, um, but it's not a good first. You really have to have good cutting um, understand your cutting and get good good cuts, good pressing techniques so you don't distort all of this stuff. Um, but you really got to have your quarter inch seam on board. It's very, very important that you have your quarter inch seam intact because that's with all of those blocks that you got to put together, it's very important. So that is a good thing to say to you now is if you are doing this or are interested in trying it, take some scraps out of there and get yourself started to see if it was something that you like to do, I would encourage you to test your quarter inch seam. I can't tell you how many times I had questions about they have a quarter inch foot, why am I not getting a quarter inch? Not all feet are really a quarter inch. And there's a lot of other variables in play I do have a link for the quarter inch seam. I did a video on it um, a while ago, but it's there. I'll put a link here for you so that you can watch that to understand some of the different mechanisms. Um, but in, I, before you start, test your quarter inch seam, make the adjustments that you need to get those on point and um, make sure you're good to go because that will make or break you and you will curse me out and I don't want you to be angry. <laughs> this is supposed to be fun. So <laughs> none of that. I'm, I'm giving the warning. <laughs> You've got to have your quarter inch seam on board. I actually tested mine. I've got it ready to go. It has been working beautifully. So I got my seam guide there like you all know that I do. And so, um, yeah, I think that is really all, but I do want to say once again, it, this, this video is just over these two blocks, okay? Because these are the two blocks that you're going to need to make to get that beautiful double Irish chain. So let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, <clears throat> so the first block is a 25 patch. So I wanted to show you how I put them together and give you a new technique. 
um, makes things a lot easier, especially if you're working through a project and you got to stop. <laughs> so I first lay them all out. Okay, so this is all my blocks laid out. I have to cut some more whites, so you're only seeing a couple in there, and there's actually some more of these that I have to cut. But I will tell you that you need to make 28 25 patches, okay? So you'll make 28 of these blocks. But I do lay them all out, and then what I'm going to do is something that we call web piecing. And I'll show you why I actually do enjoy. And I think as we progress through this, you will see why I enjoy doing it this way. So the first thing is I always find my top left block. So this is column one, two, three, four, and five. And it is important that you have your background because this, this will be your X right here. So you'll have a background. Uh, fabric, your color, your background, your color, your background, okay? And the first thing I do is I flip over this row, on the second column to the first column, okay? And we are going to send this one through the sewing machine. And you want to make sure that you're sewing the correct block on top. So when you flip it over, bring it straight on over to your sewing machine. Now I already have this set up. Matter of fact, I'm gonna lower my stitch count because my machine likes to standardize at two and a half and I prefer two. So I do have a stitch count of 2.0, or stitch count, <laughs> stitch length. And I am, um, I already have my quarter inch seam uh, finished and ready to go. I went ahead and tested it already. So you just simply put the first one through and don't, don't cut threads. Okay. Then we're going to take the next, the second one and we're going to fold it over to the first column again. We're going to pick it up. And remember, you want, when you pick it up, bring it straight over to the sewing machine because you want to make sure that you're sewing the correct way. Because if we sewed this, see, I'm going to sew it on this side. So if I open that up, this will be on the left. If we sewed the other side when we opened it up, it would be backwards, okay? So it's really important that you just bring it over don't cut threads. And it's good if you have them nice and straight. <laughs> All right. We're going to sew this one through. And again, don't cut threads. Come back to your blocks. You're going to flip it over second row to the first or second column to the first column and when you bring it over bring it straight over to your sewing machine so you sew the correct side make sure they're lined up all right and without cutting threads sending it through come back to your blocks you're going to take the next one, flip it over, all right, get it lined up nice and pretty, nice and straight, and these are right sides together. Now, <clears throat> my, none of my, there's only one or two really um, directional pieces of fabric that I have, but you'll want to pay that attention, making sure whenever you put your blocks together that you um, keep everything in the direction that you want. And don't flip and turn them too much. Just one little flip it over. We're going to make sure that we bring it straight over to the sewing machine. OK, 
Okay. Get it nice and lined up. All right, now at this point, what I am going to do is have a leader ender, but all right, now that's my leader ender or my starter ender, whatever you want to call it, my bonus quilt. And I'm going to go ahead and snip those other that chain of blocks off okay and I'm gonna bring it over to where you can see it here a little bit into the camera so this is what we've got okay we've got a nice little chain this was my first block this is the last block they're like this okay now there are a couple ways to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and press my blocks out. So that's why I have my iron here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press them towards the color away from the white. Okay. So away from the white. I need, I need a bigger table guys. All right. I do set my seam first, pressing away from the white. Here, me stand up. <clears throat> Let me set this down. Let me get this a little bit better for me so I can press them just a bit easier. Now, sometimes you will see that something might, like this one looks like it flipped a little bit, but you can just turn it so it goes back. I'm going to set my seam here. And I want to press it the other direction. And I know that because what I'm getting is white off white, or background color, background color, background, right? So I know which way that my blocks need to go. All right, so once all of that is pressed, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start to take from this row. So now we're working on the third row. I'm gonna come down to my sewing machine area. I'm gonna have these laid out a little bit and it works nice if they're not pulling too hard and they're not real heavy anyway because they're not really big blocks but we're going to take from this third row at the top and we're going to attach it to this first one first row third block in to the second block right sides together so you will have to flip them making sure everything's lined all up all right nice and straight and you're going to go ahead and stitch them in and when i get closer to this one i go ahead and get ready and i pull the second one and i get it kind of lined up as best as i can I'm going to go ahead and finish this one off, getting ready for this one to come along behind it, I'm trying to make sure it's nice and straight. Okay. Keeping it straight because that way you know your quarter inch seam is going to be correct. And go ahead and stitch on that one. Okay, I'm going to grab the next row, which is a white, put them right sides together. Okay, 
finish this one off. Whoop, they're not straight. Oh yeah, they are, okay. Whew. All right, go ahead and stitch along there. Now these ones closed a little bit. And as they get closer to the bottom here, it's easier because they just kind of lay here. But I'm gonna grab the next one, which is a color, and it's the fourth one. If you ever get confused where you're at, you just gotta count the blocks that you have on your sewing machine. Okay. There we go. I think I can turn my speed up. I was uh, sewing something else. Last one for the third column. Okay. Another leader ender. I'm gonna go ahead and snip off my chain. And again, when I press, I'm going to press away from the white towards the color okay so we're going to do that real quick <clears throat> and i'm going to speed up this video because i'm thinking you're probably going to understand um oops what it is i'm doing here but i'm going to show you why as soon as we're done all right. Press away. Now you could sit here and just do a finger press and then come back with an iron later. That's always good too. And some people like to iron at the end. But I find that if you don't give yourself a lot of um, room, per se, a lot of chain in between, then it's easier to do this as you go. So that's why I'm doing it as I go, because I find it easier. Oops, almost did that one the wrong direction. Flip it over. All right. Okay. So now we have three, and they're all, if you'll notice what we're doing here, they're still connected. The rows are connected or the, yeah, the rows are connected by our chain pieces as we're forming each row. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the fourth one. Now here's where I'm going to speed up the video because we're, I'm going to do this fourth one. I'm going to allow you to watch me do it, but we're going to do the fourth one and then we'll do the fifth one when it's done. And then I'll show you the next step.
Okay, just want to show you. I now have four rows attached with webbing. They're all still attached, so we're going to do the last row. Okay, this is the last one that we had to do, the last row. So now we have all five of them done, all still connected. Now at this point, the one of the reasons I like doing it like this is simply because if I was having to stop especially since I have to make 28 of them, no matter what, this block is together, okay? I can totally save this just the way it is, put it in an, a, a little project box and come back and do this second part. I could do all 28 like this and then come back and sew these together. Now, because of the way we've pressed, you're very simply going to take your first or your top row or column. No, it's a row. Take your top uh, row and fold it over to the second one. And because of the way we pressed, all your seams are going to nest. Now it is a little longer. There are five blocks. So I do go ahead and pin. Okay, all my little nesting areas. I don't know if y'all saw earlier, but when I was moving the table, I spilled all my pins. I think I have three on the floor. <laughs> Gonna have to clean those ones up. But I'm gonna sew this one with you and then just talk through the rest of it and do it off camera for you. But this is what they call webbing because you have all your rows still connected with that piece of thread and it's it's helpful if you give yourself a little bit of room in your chaining and not butt up right next to them right next to each other um, because then you can manipulate this a little easier I sometimes forget Perfect. Okay, so now everything's pinned and I am going to go ahead and sew these two rows together. Okay, and then after that I'll talk through the rest here. So bring it over to your sewing machine. And another thing that's really helpful is that we know which seam we're sewing and we won't get that confused. Nope, it's not quite straight. Let me get that one straight. Sorry. 
You could pin at the beginning also. I try not to pin as much as possible, but if I'm really looking at a lot of seams, it helps immensely. And this sucker is going to be in the way. Push this over just a little. All right. Now you saw that I sewed twice I mean, pinned on either side of my seam. That's typically what I do. Oh, there went another pin on the floor. And the reason is, so I'm gonna pull that first one out when I, right before I get to it. Okay, and then I'm gonna go over the seam line. Once I'm over the seam line, I can pull the last pin out and my seam should be staying just the way it should. Go to the next one. So I'm gonna go ahead. I have, this one I was, I pinned so that it was far enough that I can actually get my needle. Let me pull this one up a little. I don't know if you'll be able to see this but I was able to stop right inside where this lap, you know, where, where this uh, white off white fabric uh, is right before the needle. So I'll then pull this pin out. I'll keep sewing until I go right past that seam line. It doesn't matter where this needle is as long as it's not before it, right? So I'm gonna stop either right on that seam or right after it and then I'll pull the last one. Oh, I gotta pull this pin, I almost forgot. Okay. That's one of the things I love about this particular seam guide. With the other one, I use it with really bulky. The ones that you've seen in my previous videos, it's really thick. So things that are bulky, it helps immensely with, but I have to pin like I was left-handed, backwards. This one allows them, it's thin enough. It's 130 sec, 132nd, of an inch so my pins can go over it and it allows me to keep my fabric straight so I've hit right past the seam so I'm going to pull this this needle out or pin out and then keep going I'm making sure felt like it flipped but it didn't get this a little bit straighter over here try to keep things nice and straight I'm gonna go ahead and pull this, well, I got one more. Now I can pull that pin out. Again, when I go either on the seam line or right past it, I'm gonna pull that other one out. That way I know that my needle's holding that nested seam in. Okay, pull that pin out. Pull that pin out, sew to the end. Let's see, what does this look like? Yep, that'll work. I'm just sewing some, whoops, squares together here. All right. Okay, where are my scissors? Where are my snips? Snips are gone. There they are. Okay, pull this one off. Pull that leader ender off. Okay, now I will not press at this point, okay? <clears throat> and the reason is, let me, turn, well, let me see, sorry about that guys because I need to make sure what I'm doing when I connect them. So for now, I'm not gonna press these. But when you open this up, you will see, look how pretty those points are, guys. They look good, it works. Okay, now the next one, I wanna to add to this row. 
So I'll take these two, flip it over, and pin. And then when these three are sewn together, I'll flip all three of them over and pin the seams in this one. Then when the four are together, I'll flip them all over, attaching it to the last row. Okay, so that is webbing. So I'm gonna go ahead off camera and finish up doing all of my rows together. And I'll show it to you when I'm done and we start the next block. Because like I said earlier, we have two blocks. Oh, see, look how nicely they just, they just work so nicely together because of the way we pressed them. Everything nests really nice. It's just nice. Okay, so I'm gonna get this done off camera and then I'll get set up for the second block. So I'll see you guys in just a bit. Okay, so here she is all sewn together. Now, it's not flat because I still have those seams on the back that I need to press. However, we'll talk about that after we do the next block. So again, I, don't, I didn't mention this, but these are two and a half inch squares. So you'll need uh, 12 of the, the colored um, blocks and either 12 of a different color or background fabric is what I, what is in this quilt for me. So 13, I'm sorry, 13 of these, 12 of those. And yes, it looks great, doesn't it? Super awesome, super loving it. Oh, and another thing, I did say that I dropped my needles on the floor. That's another good thing about these magic pins. Because of the head is so big, they stand out and it's not hard to find. <laughs> So I just thought, I went to pick them up and I just thought I'd share that with you. Okay, so if you are making the same size quilt I am, which is uh, uh, seven across, eight down, you'll need 28 of these, okay? I did mention that and you'll need 28 of this next one. And basically the next one is um, a square with cornerstones and sashing. Okay, so we have a six and a half inch square. And what I do is I lay them out just like I talked about before. And these are six and a half by two and a half. Okay, then we have our two and a half inch colored or printed fabric, two and a half inch square, six and a half by two and a half background two and a half inch square of your print, another six and a half by two and a half, and the last two, six and a half by two and a half, okay? So you've got one, two, three, four rectangles at six and a half by two and a half, one, two, three, four printed two and a half inch squares, and your background fabric at six and a half inches. Pretty self-explanatory. So what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna try and do this as far as I can without using a leader ender, and we will see just how far we get. But you take your first one, we're gonna build this row, and this row, and this row. Now I'm gonna chain piece. Okay. Oh, might help if my sewing machine was turned on. That's always a good thing. I, I turn it off um, off in when I'm getting different things ready because I'm trying to save that light. I don't know how that works when the light goes out. <laughs> so, and I know it's 50,000 hours or something, but as much as I sew, it's actually on a lot. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and get this started. And I'm gonna show you what I do is, I try to make it a game and see how far I can get before I have to use a leader ender. <laughs> So, got the first one. Then I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna take the next two. Whoops, might help if I grabbed them both. Okay, I'm just, you can't see me, but I'm actually lining them up, making sure they're lined up nice and pretty. Okay. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the camera for you. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Then I go to the last row. And I'm putting them together nice and pretty. To be real honest, you could web piece this one also. But just so you know, I'm not today. But you could do the same process with this as a nine patch and that might be a good place to practice. Take my leader ender off. I'm not gonna press quite yet. I'm gonna go ahead and get all these on and I'll show you why. We're gonna talk about it for a second. Okay. And actually not doing it here, the pressing, it's just, I don't need to press yet. It's nothing's in the way. Oh, got the last one for this row. So I will press them. Oop. Get this started so it holds it. My tip's not quite lined up. And we still have that last square on the last row. Okay. So I just clipped off the end of the chain. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and press the first two. Okay, now, just like we did with the 25 patch, and it'll help, I'm going to go ahead and press to the dark, okay, away from the center. And this will help. So you set your seams, at least I do. It helps relax those threads. And then we're just going to very simply press this block towards the dark side. Whichever way you want your um, seam to go, you have that piece on top, okay? Now this is the reason why I wanted to talk a little bit. I want these to nest. So this seam is going that way, which is going to help when we attach it to the 25 patch, okay? So it's going out. So in order to have these nests, some people don't like to do this, but I am actually going to press so that these seams are going in. This is an off-white fabric. It looks more white than off-white, but it is a little tiny bit of an off-white vintage color. Um, however, whew, making sure I put them on right because they're tone on tone. <laughs> So what might happen, and I don't, I personally don't care, but what might happen is I might get a shadow through here. I'm really okay with that, okay? So if you don't want shadows, you would push it out, but then your seam isn't going to nest. And some people like to press their seams open, so they'll do that in the 25 patch to help eliminate some of that bulk. They, but you have to line them all up, and I'm just, I just don't personally. Um, there's been debates, quilting debates, many of them, about whether or not they loosen your um, seams. I, it just, that's not the main purpose for me on why I do it this way. It just, it just is easier for me to nest seams and I, I would prefer that pretty look 
with my seams than I would, I don't know why I'm doing it like that. Um, you don't want to squiggle as much as possible <laughs> because it'll distort your block. So <clears throat> that's not the reason I like my, I like my points to line up. So it makes it easy if I have seams that will nest. Whoop. And look at that. I wonder if my quarter inch seam is off or if I cut something wrong. See how it's not quite perfect? So I'm going to have to fold that one in. It might be this block. I might not have cut that one good. But I'm going to go ahead and line up my seams. And I'm going to go ahead and pin them just like I always do. No, they, they look good. Maybe it was just the way it was laying. This seems to be lining up nicely. Okay. I was going to say, I didn't move it and it's sticky. It doesn't shift a whole bunch. Could be the way I sewed it. If you don't sew straight, sometimes that'll happen. Um, there's a lot of reasons. I, I do have a little bit. The, it it whatever's gone on on this seam i've got something if you can see i've got a little extra on top here and normally when you whatever one is bigger you want to usually put down towards the plate of your like this but because of the way i put my pins in i'm not going to do that so we're going to see what happens i get i'm getting some of this pack -a mat fiber on here <laughs> all right so let's i'm hoping that because I have feed dogs, double feed dogs, it'll help ease everything in. And again, when I get up to that seam, I'm going to pull the first pin out. Okay. Once I pass the seam, Take the other pin out. Now I'm going to pull just a little, help to ease this in. There we go. We'll see what happens here. Hopefully I don't get a pucker. Because I'm already seeing that I might. And depending on how bad it is, will depend on whether or not I am going to rip this stitch or not. So either my six and a half inch square is not cut right or I slipped when I was stitching. I don't know where my tweezers are. There we go. Or my purple thing for that matter. All right, so this one, just right next to the pin, because it, it's the seam is opposite. Once I pass the seam line, I can pull the other pin out. Now look, I got nothing else. I do have one more thing to sew, right? I got this bottom, but I have to use the leader ender now. That's the long way. I don't know why I sewed that way. That's okay. Okay. <clears throat> now I've got, whoops, this last one. Oh, I got to press it first. All right. So remember I'm pressing towards the dark side. Just have to let it sit for just a second. The pack of mat the, it's made of 100% alpaca fiber. You can find these in our shop. I have a few of them right now um, in the store. However, they retract the heat back up to the fabric from the bottom, 
what you're putting on the top. So it really helps get really pretty flat seams, just like a wool mat, but it's made of alpaca. So there's a little bit of differences. Now here's that pucker. I bet you, well, we can't press it yet, but I bet you that's gonna, it's not bad on the front end. Not bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this on here. See, this one is longer a little bit too. Well, is it? Maybe this one's good. But I'm gonna go ahead and pin these again. I don't know if I've told you all this, but I'm so glad you stopped by today. It's always nice to sew with a buddy. I know you're not physically here, and I'm actually talking to a camera. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to pretend that you're here. It just makes it easier and a lot more enjoyable. Okay, so there we have it. I went ahead and pinned parallel to the seam on both sides. So when I come across here on this one, as soon as I hit this seam, this part of that seam, I'll pull this pin out. Once I cross over the seam, line, I'll pull that second pin out. Come along here, now what I'll do is I'll stop before it, trying to get on the back side of what this is, okay? Because the seam goes the opposite direction. So I'm gonna stop before the pin, but not too early, just like right before it. And then once I pull that pin out and I cross over this seam line, because I don't know if you'll be able to really see that, but there's a seam line right here. So once I cross over, the seam line, I'll pull the second pin out, okay? Because I know this white is really hard to see on camera. So, and I'm using Dove Orofil thread to stitch, which is a very light gray. So again, it makes it hard to see. All right, so here we go last stitch for this block and you can see this one goes a lot faster pull that pin out once i cross that seam i can pull the second pin out and again that's just helping keeping that seam locked i'm using the needle before i pull the pin out Before I get too crazy. All right. So I'm gonna, this one's going the opposite way. So as soon as I, I'm about a needle from, a width from the, the if I would have hit that stitch again, it'll hit the needle. That's how close I try to get. That's another game I like to play. Okay, pull that pin out. And we'll go ahead and finish. Clip it off, get that leader ender. And actually, this is what we call a spider. And I've talked about that before. It's called a spider because once you get all your threads off it, you know, it's like spider legs. So I do have spiders now in my quilting room. That was a big joke I used to say. All right, pull this off. Maybe if I can get the thread. All right, now we're gonna talk about pressing these seams and we'll see, I think this that'll um, iron out. Let's make sure how we did here. Looking good, right? All right, this one, you're not supposed to point out your mistakes, so don't do that. But this one is actually just, I don't even know, like a thread off, but nobody will see that. You really won't. Okay, I gotta stand up here. Now we're gonna talk about which way we're gonna, we're gonna, um, press these longer seams. So we gotta talk about this for just a second. And I'm not gonna put the blocks together at this time, so. All right. 
this seam and this seam will nest. So I'm going to want them to go opposite. Okay. This seam and this seam will um, nest. These two is it's not going to matter. So which way do I want to do this? Well, what I would love to do, so I'm going to, I'm going to try to prevent this shadowing in here going all the way around, although that might be even cooler because then at least it looked intentional. But I'm going to, I'm actually going to press this going out and this going out. So what that means when I go to do these blocks, I got to make sure that the top row is in and the bottom row is in. And then these two, I'll probably just go towards the dark, whichever way that is. And it won't even matter if I say that because every other block is white, right? But I'm just looking at the edge. So this one, I'm going to press out. This one, I'm going to press out, okay? And I'm going to do this one in front of you. We'll see if that pucker goes out. And then on these, the top row will go in, the bottom row will go in, and these two really won't matter, okay? Whichever your heart content. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and press this, set in the seam. Oh, see, it's already starting to melt out. Okay. Look at, look at this, look at it, look, look at it. Isn't she so gorgeous? And the it, it came right out. There's no pucker in there. So it was a little one. And I just tried to ease it in as best as I could. Like I said, if in fact you have a piece that ends up being bigger, it's better to put it on the bottom to allow those feed dogs to work harder for you. Because my feed dogs are on the bottom. I don't have the walking foot on, so I just have the, the dual feed dogs on the bottom there. But if you put that bigger fabric on the bottom, then it will um, help ease that fabric better. But she's nice and pretty and flat. Isn't she gorgeous? So again, you'll need 28 of these. You'll need, if you're making the same size, you'll need 28 of these. Now, if you remember, well, maybe I didn't tell you. No, I didn't. Because these are two and a half inches, okay, blocks, two and a half inch squares, this finishes unfinished, not in the quilt. So if I, once I press this out, then you can measure, you can take your ruler, it should be 10 and a half inches, okay, which also means this should be 10 and a half inches. So all your blocks should be 10 and a half inches before it goes in the quilt. Once it's in the quilt, they'll be 10 inches. Okay. Cause you lose a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. So this will finish block 10 inch, but with, once you press, take your ruler and measure it, it should be 10 and a half inches. Okay. I'm going to wrap this up. So I'm going to see you guys in just a sec. Okay. So I've got them both pressed. Aren't they darling? Isn't that just going to be so darling? And basically, whenever you do this, it's just these two blocks to make that double Irish chain. That's all it is. And you'll just alternate the two blocks, putting those together. That's all it is. <clears throat> now, if you're making this through your scrap bin, which I highly encourage because I think it'd be pretty too. <laughs> um, I personally, I would make all my 25 patches first because when you line this up, I want to make sure that these cornerstones aren't going to be, you know, messing with something that is next, you know, it, you got the white in between, but I don't want anything the same going along. See, I won't put this down here cause I've got, I've got that polka dot down there. So I just don't want anything the same. So I will build, I would build these first and then that way I know which four corners to make. And you have to think about 
all the different ways that a block will be surrounded. So if you have all these made, you'll be able to lay four of them out to be sure that none of them are going to be next to each other, right? I hope that was clear. I would do, that's how I'm doing this one as a matter of fact, even though I'm not using it from my scrap bin, I still wanna make sure that my placement and my choices in the square block, those cornerstones are not going to interfere with other things. I did wanna show you one more thing. Um, this is actually, and I'm gonna talk about this. It's gonna be hard for me to hold it. This is what webbing will do for you, okay? So I can leave this for now and keep making more and come back and then sew them all together because they're not going nowhere. I can put them in a project box and I can leave them be or I can go ahead and finish them. But if I get interrupted with something and I need to answer the phone or I need to cook dinner or whatever, I don't have to worry about these things getting messed up or you know a kitty cat coming along and scooting off the fabric out of place and I'm not sure what went where. So real advantageous. And if you'll notice, one of the other things I wanna talk about, this isn't connected. And the reason is, like I told y'all, you wanna take from the second column put it on the first column and then take it directly to your sewing machine. I flip-flopped one of these and so I had to cut it apart. But because the rest of it is fine, it still it, it still works. So that's just what I did. I just snipped these first it was this one that I flipped. So I just snipped the little chain in between and then when I added the third column, it kept it all together. So it happens, <laughs> stuff happens, <laughs> but I wanted to show you that it's okay. And it's too bad that it was the first one. Cause if it happened in the middle, at least it would, st it would, it would hang better, <laughs> but it does happen. I just wanted to show you in case it happens to you, don't unclip all of them, just clip where you need to, to rearrange, um, or maybe even, <laughs> I hope you never have to use Jack, but if you did, for me, I just was able to spin the block before I sewed the next one. So if you have directional fabric, that may not work as well. It will just depend on what you have. Um, I mean, if I did that with this stripe, because I do want this stripe to be horizontal in all my blocks and not up and down, I, if I get one up and down, I might have to use Jack to actually clean it out, but then I would just re-add it to that block and start with the next column with the chain piecing. So it can happen. It probably will happen. It happens to all of us. So that's, I wanted to talk about that real quick. Um, next week, like I did talk about earlier, uh, next week I will be showing two different ways to put this block together or into, you know, assemble the quilt top because I have a couple of methods. Um, like I talked about earlier, this was why I decided to do this uh, particular double Irish chain with you in making it two weeks because it's already a long video. Imagine if I added more. So next week I'll be back here on Wednesday showing you how two different methods and uh, that you can put your quilt top together, that you can assemble these. But if you're good with it and you're just ready to rock and roll, they just get alternated back and forth, okay? And that'll give you that beautiful chain look inside of your quilt. Looking forward, if you make one of these, I love, love, love with, just absolutely love to see your pictures. Um, you can join in our, the easiest place is to join our um, community group the creative kingdom found on Facebook and the link for that is down below. Just answer the three questions and you'll get your keys to the kingdom, but that's it. That's the two blocks. That's it. It just takes two. So, um, two blocks for the double Irish chain. I will be on Facebook live at 3 PM Eastern daylight time, uh, on our Facebook business page for a live quilting and answer session. So if you have any any questions at all about this process, any suggestions, any comment, just or just, just wanna just chit chat. We will be there 
3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Link for that is also down below. Hope to see you there. In the meantime, you can also drop comments, questions, or anything down below. I think a lot of you realize that I do get back to those comments and suggestions or ideas or questions, whatever's in there, I do tend to, I have yet to not answer anyone. I, I, I make it very, it's a very important thing that I, that it's part of being in the community. We have to have a two way. And so when you talk to me, I, I just love talking back to you. Um, it's our way of getting to know each other and building that, that community kind of, uh, um, atmosphere. So and that's what quilters are. We are very socially engaged. It takes, you know, it takes a lot of us sometimes to work through things or understand things or learn things. And that's what we do as quilters. And sometimes we just like to get to know each other as we're, as we're stitching. So I will be there today. I hope this was educational for you or at least inspiring to you. I hope you find some inspiration and maybe make your own double iris chain. So until next week, guys, may y'all continue to be inspired, productive, and ever so joyful and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all soon.